Um, so this poem is called A Beautiful Hood Tale, um, and it's my story, and it's a story of, of redemption. Growing up, hearing about murder was as common as the rain. When the sun finally came out in my neighborhood, so did the guns. In the hood, bullets fly like frantic birds with no vision. Have you ever lived in the mouth of a human summer trying to escape the August heat and the heat from a gunshot wound at the same time? Have you ever seen the pavement swallow the last heartbeat of an innocent bystander? When I was in the sixth grade, I witnessed my first homicide. A man drowning in alcohol and jealousy shot his wife in the chest for trying to leave. I remember the moment in slow motion. The impact lifted her body in the air like a temporary rapture. Her arms and hair flew back as if she was dancing in the wind. After the loud thunder of his pistol, her hair was a violent lightning bolt striking the sky. When she finally hit the ground, her body laid still as an ocean trying not to wake the waves. The deranged man stood over his dead wife for 30 seconds. His face a harsh Chicago winter. Put the gun in his mouth and blew his brains into a thousand bloody snowflakes. My mind told me to run, but my body forgot how to move. After that day, I knew I could be next. Through the years, I lost so many friends to bullets that found them guilty of living in the ghetto. Witnessing the body count around you rise will eventually make you wonder what color your casket will be. You start to visualize your best picture, screen pressed on dollar store t-shirts, with R.I.P. plastic beneath your used-to-be smile. Bodies, standing statue on street corners all day start to look like tombstones. And that's why, when God saves a soul from the hood, I imagine the angels rejoicing a little different. A flood of tears in heaven finally spilling into a praise shout when someone who escaped death their entire life finally dies to their sin. I imagine the father with the same sovereign smirk on his face when Philip and First John asked him, can anything good come from Nazareth? As if the Messiah couldn't come from a poor place. As if God could save a people from the Roosevelt Projects in Brooklyn, from the Third Ward in New Orleans, from the West End of Atlanta, or from the South Side of Chicago. When God saved me, I was in my room in the wee hour of the morning. Outside my window was the color of an old photograph. Dawn just began to chip away at my face, and I saw the grace of God in my life for the first time. I realized how I escaped more than death, but hell, the day two men, dressed in hate, shot in the car me and my cousin was in, and neither of us was hit. Or when me and my friend broke into a home to steal goods that didn't belong to us, I looked to the left, and the owner I thought was gone was sleeping on the couch, quiet as a courtroom during a sentencing, a shotgun next to his side, locked and loaded, ready to break a sinner like me. I know God kept him asleep because he wasn't ready for me to meet the grave. God always had plans on fathering me. So Father, if I ever forget how to praise you, let my tongue forget language. Let my ears forget how the ocean sounds when the currents violently collide against the rocks along the shoreline. And let me forget the morning where the silence sings a symphony of peace that only you can orchestrate and where your mercy is new and in its sweetest form. But let me remember all the days you saved my life from the harsh hush of a barrel. How my mother never had to cry a sad storm Seeing her son ghost-like beneath a white sheet The spine of a morgue shivering from her screams Satan called for my funeral many nights But you preserved me for the morning Before you kissed this world open You predestined me for your own You are so worthy of a black boy's praise I said, God, you are so worthy of a black boy's praise And as long as I'm above ground I will always be living proof that you haven't forgotten about a dying hood.